The Hessian matrix is a fundamental concept in multivariable calculus and optimization. It's a square matrix that contains all the second-order partial derivatives of a scalar-valued function. For a function f of two variables x and y, the Hessian matrix H contains four second-order partial derivatives arranged in a two-by-two two matrix. The diagonal elements are the pure second derivatives, while the off-diagonal elements are the mixed partial derivatives. The primary purpose of the Hessian matrix is to measure the local curvature of a function at a given point. Just as the first derivative tells us about the slope, the second derivatives tell us about how the slope is changing, which is curvature. In optimization, the Hessian matrix plays a crucial role in identifying and classifying critical points. Critical points occur where the gradient is zero, meaning all first-order partial derivatives equal zero. The Hessian helps us determine the nature of these critical points. The Hessian matrix helps determine whether a critical point is a local minimum, local maximum, or saddle point. This classification is essential for understanding the behavior of the function near critical points and for optimization algorithms. Let's examine a simple two-dimensional example to illustrate these concepts. Consider the function f of x, y equals x squared plus y squared. This is a paraboloid that opens upward with its minimum at the origin. For our example function, let's compute the second order partial derivatives. The second partial derivative with respect to x is two, the second partial derivative with respect to y is also two, and both mixed partial derivatives are zero. Putting these second derivatives together, we get the Hessian matrix for our example function. It's a two by two matrix with twos on the diagonal and zeros on the off diagonal. This matrix tells us about the curvature properties of our paraboloid function. To calculate the Hessian matrix for a function of two variables, we use a specific formula involving second order partial derivatives. Each entry in this matrix represents a different second order partial derivative. Let me explain what each symbol means. The entry f double x represents the second partial derivative of f with respect to x twice. The entry f x y represents the mixed partial derivative, first with respect to x, then with respect to y. Now let's work through a concrete example to see how this works in practice. Consider the function f of x comma y equals x cubed minus 3xy plus y cubed. We'll calculate each second order partial derivative step by step. First, let's calculate f double x, the second partial derivative with respect to x. To find f double x, we first take the partial derivative with respect to x, then take the partial derivative of that result with respect to x again. Next, let's calculate f double y, the second partial derivative with respect to y. Similarly, to find f double y, we take the partial derivative with respect to y twice. Now let's calculate the mixed partial derivative, fxy. For fxy, we first take the partial derivative with respect to x, then with respect to y. According to Clairaut's theorem, for functions with continuous mixed partial derivatives, fxy equals fyx. Let's verify this. Clairaut's theorem states that if the mixed partial derivatives are continuous, then the order of differentiation doesn't matter. Let's calculate fyx to confirm. Now we can assemble our complete Hessian matrix using all the second order partial derivatives we calculated. The Hessian matrix for our function f of x comma y equals x cubed minus three xy plus y cubed is assembled by placing each second order partial derivative in its correct position. Now that we know how to calculate the Hessian matrix, we can use it to classify critical points in two dimensions. This process involves three main steps that we'll explore systematically. Step one requires finding critical points by setting the gradient equal to zero. For a function f of x and y, we need both partial derivatives to equal zero simultaneously. Once we have the critical points, we evaluate the Hessian matrix at each point and calculate its determinant. The determinant d equals fxx times fyy minus fxy squared. This determinant, along with the sign of fxx, tells us the nature of each critical point. Now let's apply this process to our example function f of x, y equals x cubed minus 3xy plus y cubed. First, we find the critical points by computing the partial derivatives and setting them equal to zero. Now we evaluate the Hessian matrix at each critical point. The Hessian has fxx equals 6x, fyy equals 6y, and fxy equals negative 3. At the origin, the determinant is negative 9, indicating a saddle point. At point 1, 1, the determinant is positive 27 with fxx positive, indicating a local minimum.
The Hessian matrix extends naturally to functions of more than two variables. For a function of n variables, the Hessian becomes an n by n symmetric matrix containing all second partial derivatives. Classification of critical points in higher dimensions relies on analyzing the eigenvalues of the Hessian matrix. The signs of these eigenvalues determine the nature of the critical point. For example, eigenvalues of positive 2, positive 1, and positive 0.5 indicate a local minimum. Eigenvalues of negative 3, negative 1, and negative 0.2 indicate a local maximum. Mixed eigenvalues like positive 2, negative 1, and positive 0.3 indicate a saddle point. As the number of variables increases, the complexity grows significantly. Computing eigenvalues of large matrices becomes computationally expensive, and visualizing the behavior becomes impossible beyond three dimensions. The Hessian test has important limitations. When the determinant is zero or eigenvalues are zero, we have degenerate cases where the test is inconclusive. In these situations, higher order derivatives or alternative methods are needed. When the Hessian test fails, alternative optimization techniques can be used. Gradient descent is a popular iterative method that follows the negative gradient to find minima. Other methods include Newton's method, conjugate gradient, and quasi-Newton methods like BFGS. In summary, the Hessian matrix extends to higher dimensions but becomes computationally challenging. While eigenvalue analysis provides classification rules, degenerate cases require alternative approaches. Understanding these limitations is crucial for practical optimization problems.